Texas today for the worst jobs report ever. Breaking news, as the coronavirus pandemic now claims more than 1,000 lives in the United States, we get a rare look inside one New York City hospital in the center of the crisis, reporting at least 13 deaths in 24 hours, desperate for supplies. The frustrating thing about all of this is it really just feels like it's too little too late. Like we knew, we knew it was coming. A nurse passing away from the virus, all this after Governor Cuomo offers a small sign of hope. The evidence suggests that the density control measures may be working. Saying the rate of hospitalizations may be slowing. The faces of the crisis, the real people battling coronavirus and fighting for their lives. A 25-year-old athlete now in a medically induced coma. A husband and father dying days before his 45th birthday. Five members of the same Missouri family testing positive and tributes pouring in for influential celebrity chef Floyd Cardoz. Days after posting that he was checking himself into the hospital only as a precautionary measure. The government set to reveal the worst unemployment numbers ever this morning. Millions losing their jobs as the Senate unanimously passes the largest economic rescue package ever, $2 trillion, promising checks soon to most Americans. And President Trump stands by his hope to ease government shutdowns to control the coronavirus. Well, I would say by Easter we'll have uh, a recommendation. Resisting the advice of his own health experts. New detail this morning about Prince Charles testing positive for coronavirus. What the palace is doing to protect the 93-year-old queen. Also this morning, telemedicine for pets and much more. The innovative ways vets are providing care to even the littlest members of the family. NBA superstar Russell Westbrook joins us live this morning. How he's helping out his hometown, coming to the rescue for so many families in need. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good morning, America. It's good to be with you on this Thursday morning as millions of Americans do their part by staying apart. It's good. To, it's going to take some patience, everybody, but Robin, we're all sticking together however we can, right? We certainly are, Michael. And I want to show you someone who is still showing his support while staying apart. Take a look at this man. A man outside a New Jersey medical center. He's holding up a sign thanking everyone in the emergency department for saving his wife's life, mm. George. Mm, boy, that hand on his heart says it all right there. Here's mm. what we know right now. Worldwide, cases have grown to more than 470,000. At least 21,000 people have died from coronavirus. Spain now with the second highest total behind Italy, but ahead of China. And there is more encouraging news there. Still no new cases in Wuhan where it all began. Here in the U.S., now more than 60,000 cases. The death toll has climbed over 1,000. And New York City, now the hottest spot, more than 20,000 cases here. Across the country, at least 28 states have closed non-essential businesses. And now the city of Miami is implementing the toughest restrictions so far. A 10 p.m. curfew will, will be put in place for the 460,000 residents starting tomorrow night. Now, as businesses close throughout this country, new unemployment figures are due out this morning, and they are expected to be at an all-time high. More on that later this morning as the Senate finally passes that $2 trillion stimulus bill that includes direct payments to most Americans. The House House now expected to vote tomorrow. We are going to continue now on the front lines. That hospital in Queens, New York, the borough with the most coronavirus cases in the city. Whit Johnson is there for us. Good morning, Whit. Robin, good morning to you. Take a look behind me. You can see people already lined up wearing masks, waiting to get inside this hospital. One doctor telling ABC News that this is ground zero for the crisis in America. They are treating hundreds of coronavirus patients here and desperate for more supplies. The frustrating thing about all of this is it really just feels like it's too little too late. Like we knew, we knew it was coming. This morning, a look inside one of the hard-hit hospitals in New York. What officials say has become the center of the crisis in America. All the patients in this room, all the feet that you see, they all have COVID. And this is only one of the several rooms. 
here at Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, at least 13 people have died in just 24 hours. There's no clear end to this. The status quo is not good enough, and that's what I'm worried about. Dr. Colleen Smith sharing her story with ABC News and the New York Times, including this moment they finally get their hands on a shipment of much-needed ventilators, but only five could be obtained. The concern is that these all these ventilators that we're told are coming but haven't really started to materialize in large numbers are they really coming will we really get them i have never seen the increase in volume as fast as it has the state accounting for roughly half of all cases across the country these grim images of teams setting up a makeshift morgue outside Bellevue Hospital something they did during 9-11 and Hurricane Sandy however a small sign of hope Governor Andrew Cuomo saying over the past three days the rate of hospitalizations is slowing but quickly cautioning that the peak of the crisis could still be 20 days away the evidence suggests that the density control measures may be working. The governor saying while only 15% of cases so far have required hospitalization, the state is anticipating 140,000 people will be hospitalized, warning he still doesn't have enough beds or life-saving ventilators. The pandemic pummeling America with nearly 70,000 cases in the U.S. alone. Patients like 25-year-old Jack Allard, a lacrosse player from New Jersey, now on a ventilator in a medically induced coma. He took his health very seriously. I mean, he's an athlete. Jermaine Miller, a husband and father from New York, dying last week just days before his 45th birthday. His wife, Erica, heartbroken. I got this call. And only thing I remember the doctor saying to me, hello, Erica. I said, yes. He was like, I'm sorry. And that's all that I remember him saying, I'm sorry. And I just dropped the phone and I ran upstairs and I had to break the news to the family. In Missouri, five members of the same family all testing positive for COVID-19. Jason Winehouse, his brother and sister-in-law recovering at home. His mother and father still in the hospital. And overnight, ABC News learning a member of Mount Sinai's nursing staff passed away from COVID-19, saying in a statement, this growing crisis is not abating, adding today we lost another hero, a compassionate colleague, friend, and selfless caregiver. President Trump standing firm, saying the country wants to get back to work. The sooner we can eventually get people back to work, back to school, and back to normal, and there are large sections of our country probably can go back much sooner than other sections. I would say by Easter, we'll have uh, a recommendation. But the president's own health experts recommending not committing to a certain date. Dr. Anthony Fauci also warning that the U.S. needs to prepare for another cycle of coronavirus. You've got to understand that you don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Back here in Queens, a spokesperson for the hospital behind me here says that they have transferred at least 30 patients to other facilities in the area to try to alleviate the challenges here. But again, New York State is preparing for this problem to get worse before it gets better. Robin? Being prepared. All right, Whip, thank you. George? Okay, Robin, thanks. Now to that breaking news overnight from Washington, where the Senate unanimously passed the largest economic rescue package in American history. Just hours before, we're expected to see the largest rise in weekly unemployment claims in American history. Economists expect that number to reach the millions for the first time ever, and our chief economic correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is tracking it all. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, George, and it is a stimulus package urgently needed across the country. To put this all in perspective, if the number of Americans who filed for unemployment insurance last week hits the 3.4 million mark, as many predict, it will be the largest number on record and the equivalent of the entire city of Chicago being out of work. Over it's good news for the doctors and nurses. And Senate. Emergency. The bill is passed. A $2 trillion stimulus package, including $250 billion in checks going directly to families struggling under the weight of soaring layoffs and statewide lockdowns. It's honestly been a disaster. Um, both of us uh, have lost our jobs. Two weeks ago, Jamie Gable was a physician's assistant. His wife, Christina, a hairdresser in New York. They were gainfully employed before both their jobs vanished.
now we're scrambling to figure out how we can uh, pay our bills. We have two children, one with a, an adult with a mental disability. He has autism. And um, just what's happening for him is all of his programs shut down. And it's happening across the country. How am I going to make rent? How, uh, you know, bills, you know, student loans? Just the nine days before this shutdown happened, we made about $32,000. That's kind of our norm in that stretch to zero. Are we going to be able to afford to buy food? Are we going to be able to pay our rent at the end of the month? Amidst the uncertainty, two of the top trending questions on Google, who will get that stimulus money and when? Those making $75,000 or less will receive $1,200. Married couples who make up to $150,000 getting $2,400 and $500 for each child. Those checks heading out as early as April 6th. If you filed your taxes electronically, the stimulus payout will likely get to you faster via direct deposit. And even when we get those numbers later this morning, the layoffs, the number of layoffs in this country may not even be fully reflected, considering the fact that the very systems that people are applying for unemployment insurance through have been breaking down this week, and a number of people may just not have filed yet, George. The numbers predicted to continue climbing. And George? Rebecca, that is why some economic experts are saying that even though this is the biggest economic rescue package ever, it may not be enough. It may not be enough, George, and that is a big concern because we still haven't seen every state close in this country because there are certain employers that have still held on to their employees. The question is, how long can they do it? And for families struggling like Jamie and Christina, who we just heard from there in this piece, that $1,200 check might not even cover what they have to pay on April 1st. Okay, George. Rebecca Jarvis, thanks very much. Let's go to Terry Moran now covering the White House. And Terry, these economic numbers obviously weighing on the president. He's banked as president on the strength of the economy. One of the reasons he's been pushing so hard to get the, get the states to reopen as quickly as they can. There's no question about that, George. And the great debate that's happening between saving as many lives as possible and saving as much of the economy as possible, President Trump is clear. He's coming down on going with the economy as much as can be done right now. Last night after the Senate passed that bill, a tweet from the president, congratulations, America, still awake uh, at that hour and tweeting. Uh, and he's watching the markets rally now. He sees that not as evidence of volatility, but uh, as evidence that he's right. And he's talking to businessmen who are uh, affirming that. He is, however, striking a slightly more cautious note, George. He is saying uh, that perhaps the country can open section by section. Uh, and he says he will listen to his public health advisors, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Birx, and others. The problem is there's no evidence uh, that that would work either economically or in terms of the virus. Yeah, George. the president did not repeat that Easter goal yesterday, at least at the press conference. Meanwhile, on Twitter, and one of these, you, you alluded to this, the president is striking a, a more harsh tone, blaming the media and his enemies for re for focusing on this crisis. That's right. He, he's on Twitter a lot, George, in the middle of this pandemic. You can just look at his timeline and see that he's retweeting a lot. He's going after his political enemies and going after the media, of course, saying the lamestream media is the dominant force. It's trying to get me to keep our country closed as long as possible in the hope that it will be detrimental to my election success. Of course, voters will judge him on the pandemic probably uh, as much, if not more, than, than the economy. But this is a president who governs by his gut. Uh, this is a situation, however, which will require a lot of lot more evidence and then perhaps a different approach. George. Okay, Terry Moran, thanks very much. Amy? George, now to one of the many faces of this crisis, influential celebrity chef Floyd Cardoz passing away from coronavirus just days after writing in his last Instagram post, quote, I was feeling feverish and hence as a precautionary measure admitted myself into hospital in New York. That's now raising new questions about this virus. Cardoz's hospitality group telling ABC News he tested positive for coronavirus that same day, the 59-year-old passing away from complications from the virus after traveling abroad, though it is unclear if he had any underlying medical conditions. Michael? All right, thank you, Amy. Let's bring in our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, who's joining us from her home. And, and Doc, we heard Floyd's story. Sound like he was getting better. Then just days later, he passes away. What, is, what, do you, what do we know about how this disease progresses? 
Michael, we don't know that much. We have to remember it's less than four months old, so we know that there's a range of symptomatology. We call that the phenotype of the virus. Again, most cases are mild, 80% are mild, but in those that are more severe, it can have an up and down roller coaster like course just like influenza can. So I think that as we learn more, that's why the U.S. case reports need to be published so we can really understand and see if there's any patterns. And here in the state of New York, Governor Cuomo said the rate of hospitalization is going down. So what does that mean for us? Does that mean that the, the quarantining is working, the separation is working? What does that mean? Well, first of all, I think we have to be very, very cautious when we interpret his comment yesterday. And even he said it sounds too good to be true. He approached it with a serious degree of skepticism. But the rate is slowing. It's still doubling every four days. It used to be doubling every two days. And the reasons for that, there are several theories. First of all, it could take longer for people who are infected to develop severe disease. And remember, when you're dealing with an infectious disease outbreak, break like this, we are always behind. And when we talk about how behind, usually a two to three week period. So think of this like we may be in the eye of the storm. All right, Doc. Great advice. Don't think it is over. Far from it. Thank you, Doc. Robin? Eye of the storm, as she put it, Michael. Now to two health care workers inspiring people to stay safe with a smile and a song. Take a look. Stop spreading the germs, it's not here to stay, because we are a part of it, the quarantine. Of course, that's Frank Sinatra's classic, <laughs> New York, New York. With some undated lyrics, this was shared with me on social media. I was doing the show yesterday from my home, and then this popped up on my feed. And for the workers at St. Colby Puckett Center for Healing in St. Joseph, Missouri, other lyrics, if you're to make it here, must have safety gear. We appreciate the creativity and such an important message, guys. Well, sure. well, well written and well sang. Yes. Mm, beautiful. Good to hear yeah. that. Thank you, Robin. Coming up, we're yeah. going to have a lot more on Prince Charles' coronavirus diagnosis and how they're keeping the queen safe. Plus, Dr. Ashton is back with how to protect your loved ones who might be more vulnerable to COVID-19. Also this morning, how telemedicine can benefit both humans and your pets. But first, let's go to Ginger, who is at home. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Amy, part of uh, Interstate 80 closed again because of more than a foot of snow. That was at Soda Springs, but the images behind me, this is from Montana. They had up to nine inches of snow. All of that energy is now going to dive down to the south and east, and what you're going to end up with is severe storms. You're going to have one little bit tonight, but then tomorrow again, Wichita up to nearly Kansas City, Tulsa included, and look where the pockets move. Peoria Illinois, down to northern Louisiana, western Mississippi, so Greenville, you'll be included as we get into Saturday. So going into the weekend, severe storms and heavy rain coming your way. All right, all of that has been brought to you. Uh, of course, we've got the Spring Cities coming up. I apologize. And your local weather, all of it brought to you by Zyrtec. Hey, allergy muddlers. It's you. Do your sneezes turn heads? Zyrtec. Zyrtec starts working hard at hour one and works twice as hard when you take it again the next day. Zyrtec. Muddle no more. And try Zyrtec D for proof and relief of your allergies, sinus pressure, and congestion. Well, a chilly start on this Thursday morning. It's dry. I am tracking a little bit of some patchy fog, but we will see sunshine, partly cloudy skies, I should say, by lunchtime today, 51 degrees, 60 degrees by 5 o'clock. So I think today will be a nice day to get outside, get a little bit of some fresh air. So definitely brighter and warmer compared to yesterday. We are tracking our next weather maker that'll bring in some rain while you're sleeping tonight, but I think your Friday shaping up to be pretty nice with partly sunny skies and highs in the 70s. And then tracking more rain this weekend. Most of the rain falls Saturday. And coming up, we're going to talk to Russell Westbrook. He's giving back. And then Julie Andrews is also joining us live in our next hour. We will be right back. Stay with us. The medicine will go down in a most delightful way.
Jimmy's gotten used to his whole room smelling like sweaty odors. Yep, he's gone nose blind. He thinks it smells fine, but his mom smells this. Luckily for all your hard-to-wash fabrics, there's Febreze Fabric.